Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 63. This series of lectures is based on my book manual of fluid electrolyte and acid-based disorders, a pathophysiologic approach to common clinical problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find my book on Amazon. Please follow the link below. In the previous three lectures, we discussed in detail proximal, distal, and hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis. In this lecture, I am going to put them side by side. We are going to compare these three types of renal tubular acidosis. After this, you'll be able to recognize any problem, any issues related to renal tubular acidosis. So let's get started. What is the main mechanism? In proximal or type 2 RTA, we have decreased bicarbonate reabsorption in the proximal tubule. That's it. In distal renal tubular acidosis, we have decreased distal excretion of hydrogen, while with hyperkalemic RTA, which has two types, like we said, voltage-dependent and type 4 RTA, we have impaired distal sodium reabsorption. This impairment in distal sodium reabsorption will lead to decreased hydrogen and potassium excretion in the collecting duct. Therefore, you are going to get both hyperkalemia and acidosis. In all these three types, like we said, we have non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. What happens to serum bicarbonate? In proximal RTA, it is moderately low. In distal RTA, well, it can be significantly low. And in hyperkalemic RTA, it's moderately low. As you can see, we have significant overlap. So you cannot really distinguish between these three types just based on serum bicarbonate. What about potassium? Well, that's an easy one. Proximal and distal RTAs, by definition, we have low potassium, while hyperkalemic RTA, well, we are saying hyperkalemic, so we are going to have hyperkalemia. Kidney function. Usually it is normal in proximal and distal RTAs, but in particularly type 4 RTA, chronic kidney disease is common. What happens to your pH during acidosis or post furosemide or ammonium chloride test? I keep coming back to this same point. When you have acidosis, the normal response for the kidneys is to make the urine acidotic, okay, is to get rid of hydrogen. Now, in proximal RTA, distal acidification is intact. You have normal urine ammonium excretion. Therefore, if you have acidosis, whether it's already there or whether you stimulate acidosis, you can have a urine pH that is low, meaning below 5.5. Now, in distal RTA, by definition, you can't because you have impaired ammonium excretion. So on a test, please, if you have a patient and urine pH is 5.3, they do not have complete distal RTA. They can't. Hyperkalemic RTA, it's variable, but the patient can potentially acidify the urine. So the only type where urine acidification is not possible is distal RTA. Sometimes you can distinguish between proximal and distal based on urine pH. If urine pH is low, you have urine pH 5.2, 5.1 on a test question. There is no way you have distal RTA. It must be proximal. Urine citrate. Urine citrate is an important test. It is low in distal RTA. It's normal, could be even high in proximal. And same thing for hyperkalemic RTA. You cannot really distinguish. It can be a little bit low or normal. But in distal RTA, it is low. And this is one of the reasons why you have kidney stones, because uh, hypocitratoria is associated with kidney stones. So remember, if you have low urine citrate, you have distal RTA. If you are suspecting distal RTA, it's a good idea to do a 24-hour urine citrate. If it is low, maybe this is your diagnosis. What about urine ammonium? Like we said, in proximal RTA, it's low or normal. Usually it is normal. While in distal RTA and hyperkalemic RTA, it is low. Okay, so the only type where you may have normal ammonium excretion is proximal. Why is that? Because the problem is with bicarbonate reabsorption. It's not an ammonium production issue. While in distal and hyperkalemic, it is. You have low ammonium production. 
What about the fractional excretion of bicarbonate? Well, it is high in proximal because this is where the problem is. It's a low reabsorption of bicarbonate, especially when you're giving alkali treatment. So if you're giving more bicarbonate, you are going to have more bicarbonate excretion. In distal RTA or hyperkalemic RTA, it can be a little bit high, but not to the point uh, where you have it with proximal, 10 to 15%. What about urine anion gap? This is a very important one. In proximal RTA, it is negative, okay? While in distal and hyperkalemic RTA, it is positive. Why is it positive? Because you have decreased ammonium production. When you have decreased ammonium production, you have low chloride in the urine, and therefore you have a positive urine anion gap. When, and the urine anion gap it is the sum of urine sodium plus urine potassium minus urine chloride. So if urine chloride is low, you are going to have a positive anion gap. So a positive urine anion gap is characteristic of both distal and hyperkalemic RTA, while it is negative, which is normal, um, in proximal RTA. Now, if you have the capability, if you're at a center where they can actually measure urine PCO2, actually, I would envy you if you can do that. Um, normal urine PCO2 is over 60 to 70 millimeter of mercury. It is normal in proximal RTA. It is normal in hyperkalemic RTA, while it is low only in distal RTA. This test is not easy. Now, this kind of follows the same thing. If you can get uh, urine PCO2, you can easily get a, a blood gas and get the blood PACO2. And now urine PCO2 minus blood PACO2, normal is over 20 to 30. So it is normal in proximal RTA while it is low with both distal RTA and hyperkalemic RTA. One exception, uh, patients who have distal RTA due to amphotericin B may have uh, a normal uh, 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 urine PCO2 minus blood PACO2, meaning it could be over 20 to 30. What about additional features? These are very helpful. In proximal, uh, in proximal or type 2 RTA, you can have Fanconi syndrome. And we said Fanconi syndrome, uh, you have increased urine excretion, not just of bicarb, but you have uh, phosphaturia, you have amino aciduria, you have uh, uricosuria, you have uh, uh, sometimes really severe hypokalemia, uh, etc. Now, with distal RTA, very, very, very important, you have nephrocalcinosis and nephrolithiasis. We said calcium phosphate stones, you see them in distal RTA and also in patients with primary hyperparathyroidism. So remember that and remember that they have low urine citrate, which really is a risk factor for kidney stones. And we said, especially in children, you can have polyuria and polydipsia. Now, patients with hyperkalemic RTA, in particular type 4 RTA, they may have chronic kidney disease, especially uh, diabetic uh, nephropathy. I'm going to end here, and uh, in the next lecture, we are going to talk about uh, acidosis in patients with chronic kidney disease. Uh, we'll see you then.